Welcome to a couple of Rad Tech's podcasts where we bring you an inside look at the world of radiology from the unique perspective of a married couple of radiologic technologists. Together, we have over 30 years of experience in the field and are here to demystify the science of medical imaging. Radiology is the unsung hero of the medical field, providing doctors with crucial images and information that help diagnose and treat illnesses. Join us as we explore the latest techniques, technologies, and innovations in radiology and discover the vital role we play play in the healthcare industry. So come along for the ride as we share our passion for radiology as a married couple. Welcome everyone. I am Sean Grant Singleton, host of a couple of Rad Techs podcasts there. And again, we are back with another fantastic guest. We have Andre Perkins. He's going to tell you more about who he is, what it is that he does in the radiology field. And we're going to be talking about three main points here. We're going to talk today about how he thought he had an age learning disability and how he transformed that. And now he has a bachelor's degree and working on his PhD. So that's going to be a fantastic conversation. So get ready for that. We're also going to talk and touch on leadership and how it looks in the radiology field. So important because so many people wonder, how can I move into leadership roles? What should I be doing? What does that look like in radiology? Well, he is a lead tech. He also is faculty at Gurnick Academy of Health, of Health Sciences. So he's going to talk about his nuclear medicine program and how leadership has led to those different areas. And also number three, we're going to talk about how to be marketable in the radiology field. That is so important. And I cannot wait to get this conversation started. So thank you, Andre, for joining us and welcome. Glad to be here, Ms. Andrea. I'm so glad to be here. I was really excited when, I, when you sent the invitation. Oh, we are happy to have you, but I want them to hear from you. Tell us who you are, how you got into radiology, that kind of stuff. My name is Andre Perkins. I'm actually from South Carolina. How I got into radiology. I was in the Army for 10 years, and I was telling Chandria earlier, it's crazy how I stumbled into radiology. It took me three times to get into the Army. Out of high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I wasn't prepared for college. Just, I was that typical slacker in high school, class clown. Don't judge me. So when I, when I went the first time to join the Army, they asked you, hey, has anybody done drugs? I knew I hadn't done drugs, but my friends all were pot smokers. I said, well, my friends are pot smokers. Right. Said, well, no, you probably smoke pot, so you need to get drug tests. Like, okay, whatever. A week later, I come back, and I had a speeding ticket. And they asked, well, who has speeding tickets? Anything, anything pending? Do I have a speeding ticket? I had to come back again once I got the speeding ticket taken care of. So the third time I finally got, I mean, through all the checklists, so the guy sat me down and he said, hey, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I don't know. Give me anything. And the guy looked at me, looked at his paper, looked at me again. He said, I have the perfect job for you. And I was like, oh, what is it? He's like, radiology. Radiology? What is, what is radiology? Okay, I'll take it. Right. This is me at 18. I get back to the recruiting station and the guys are like, what did you get? I'm like, man, I got radiology. I don't know what that is. And everyone was so amazed. I was like, Radi radiology, radiology. Wow. We have never got anyone to add radiology. I didn't realize what I had until I got to, I got to school. When I got to school, I was like, oh, we must really have something here. I'm 18 years old. I'm in San Antonio, Texas, and I have money in my pocket. No one to tell me what to do. I went crazy. We at school, partying, partied a little bit here, partied a little bit there, to the point where I actually almost failed out of radiology. I remember week six, one of, my, one of the counselors brought me and a few of my, one of my, my friends in and said, hey, look, you guys need to pick another job because you're not going to make it. And that's a rude awakening because really? they're like, wait a minute, I came all this far and, and you know, your parents, I, right. I can't go home and tell my parents I feel well, we kicked out of the army. So needless to say, we struggled, we, we went through and we, we put to the end. I don't even think I passed, but they really wanted to get us out of there. So they're like, man, get this guy out of here. In the class of 40, I think I graduated 39. And the only person that graduated with, he graduated 40 was my friend that was in the same room with me who were partying together. When I realized what I had, I was like, oh, this is really something here. I'm glad I didn't give up. I'm glad I didn't party too much longer. What made you realize that you had, what, what was it? When I went to, when I got to my first duty station and everyone kept saying, well, what were you working at? I was like, radiology. Oh man, you know, radiology. Yeah. Okay. And all my leaders were all working their off time. They were all working at Savina hospitals and making crazy money. And I was like, well, man, we really do have something here. When I got the opportunity to make that money again, with them, my status went to the stratosphere. That's when I really kind of changed my mindset. You're again, you're 19, 20 years old and you're making more money than you've ever seen in your life. When you've been in this field, like you've been in this field for 20 years. I've been right there with you. I'm at, yeah. I think, at 21 years, but same time frame. 
And I remember when I started radiology school, most of the technologists that I learned from, they were amazing. And most of them were military radiology technologists. Mm. Most of them were military. Mm. And when I tell you their skill was impeccable, I mean, just, and just their way of teaching was amazing. And there was a difference for me, especially technically when it came to the military folks who went to radiology through military. So that's really interesting that that's your background. Now tell me, what was the age learning disability and how did you overcome? I think, well, I, I say I, the, age, the age learning disability that I thought I had was when I went back to, because I, I struggled initially through radiology. So when I got accepted to nuclear medicine, I was like panicking because I'm like, man, everyone you hear, when you hear nuclear medicine, you think, oh man, that school is challenging, that school is this. Oh my God, oh my God. And me coming a little older, thinking, man, well, I struggled through radiology. It's no way in the world I'm going to pass nuclear medicine. Wasn't until somebody told me, and then take us rewind, I was learning CT. I struggled learning CT. I really, really struggled. Probably had a bad teacher, but it was all in my head. And I remember that guy, when I told everyone that I got accepted to nuclear medicine, that particular tech, I overheard him saying, he'll be back. He's not going to make it. And that kind of lit a fire. When I got to school and they started laying out the syllabus and everything we had to do, I was like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do this. Some great people that I know who went to school previously failed out. And these guys, I thought, were a lot smarter than I was. I'm a little older at this point and I've been in the field for a while and you're kind of stuck in your ways. You haven't done school stuff in right. a while, it's stuck in your way. I'm in college as well. I had then dropped out of college and quit school. It didn't make it any better when we first got there. We did this assessment test. We've all taken those tests before. It was math, chemistry, and physics. They wanted to see where you were at. Right. I got to my pen. This stuff looks familiar, but I don't know what this stuff is. I went through the test and I'm thinking, all right, you know what? I know more than I thought I did. So after the test, we are, we're all in the hallway. You know, you take a test and you get your friends. Hey, what'd you get for number one? I got C. Well, I got B. This guy says, well, no, I got, I'm like, oh, that panic factor starts coming. You're like, oh man. Right. So we give the test back. And uh, I remember specifically, it says 5%. I'm thinking, wow. okay, well, I only got 5% wrong. I looked at it again. He came by, he said, no. He said, no, Andre, you, you only got like 5% of them right. He said, that, that is a pretty wow. low score. And you have probably one of the lowest scores we've ever seen. That fear factor now goes to 100. And you're like, oh my God, I really can't do this. And I actually tried on the test. And not only a 5%, it wasn't until midway through the course, I had an instructor. He spoke into my life. He gave me life-changing words. When I received those words, it made me change my thought process. It made me change my mind. It doesn't matter what people say about you or put what kind of box they put you in. Once you change your mindset and your thought process, the world is yours. That instructor did that for me. Once he did that, my whole way of going about things, it totally changed. I actually graduated. Probably I graduated last in that class too, but I graduated and hey, I made it. So yes. You think that's important that you said it? And I love, it's so interesting because I've always been kind of like a middle student. I can't say I'm the valedictory or the end, but it doesn't matter. Everybody scores says, so I try to tell people, I've never been asked, what did I score on anything? You know, or where did I graduate in the, the line of the, the graduate? Because at the end, when we all take our register, it says P-A-S-S. -S. <laughs> and that's all, you know, that's all yes. that matters. And when we get that diploma, we get that diploma and nobody cares. I got a job, I passed. I did, I worked as hard as everybody else. And I think, you know, really other technologists and other people thinking about going into any kind of health field, especially in any field, because working period is very, it can be very competitive. School can be very competitive. That never goes away. I still work in the field for 20 years and you, you know, you get the competitiveness that I call it pettiness from people. And it, it, it can be demeaning to your spirit. Yeah, and I think as, you know, it can be very demeaning. I'm not a strong physics person when it comes to MR or radiation biology when it came to x-ray. I know how to take care of patients. I know how to get quality imaging. I've never, ever, you know, had any problems with any of my images. And I think that's because, like you said, you had a teacher that was speaking to you in a way that was supportive. And, I, and it brought you up. So it's amazing how the power of words. And that kind of transforms over to what we're talking about with leadership. What does leadership look like in radiology? In your opinion, how does one, we'll take just first, we're going to talk about students, look at how do you create a lifestyle now that will catapult you into leadership? You know, what are the things that students should do now in radiology? And then 
techs who have been in the field for a while that want to transition over into leadership. How do you do that? Tell us in your opinion, what does leadership look like in radiology? Over the years, I've had some, I've had great leadership. I've had good leadership, I have great leadership, and then I've had some not so good leadership. But the one thing I would say to any new technologist in any field of radiology who wants to move up into leadership, I would say find a good mentor who is willing to show you the ropes, show you the things that you need to do to get ahead. Find that person who is in the position that you want to be in and you can't reinvent the wheel. Ask them to teach you. Have a willingness and a want to know how to learn. I always say school. You can't go wrong with school. I had to learn that the hard way. My professional mentor, I remember specifically one time my mentor came to me and said, hey, are you still in school? I kind of smiled like, well, no, nah. I dropped out because, because of whatever it was. And she looked at me square in the face. She's like, you messed up. And once again, it was one of those. That day, I re-enrolled. But again, schooling, find a good mentor, get education under your belt because education is going to set you apart from the next technologist. We want to do, put in the work. Do the things that no one else is willing to do. I told my students the other day, you are always interviewing. And the student that technology is, you are always in an interview. People are always watching. Those who you think not watching, they are the ones who are watching you. And when it comes time for that promotion or that, that award, whatever it is, your work ethic and who you are as a person is gonna speak for you. And those people that you think weren't watching you, they're gonna speak up for you. When you interview for that next position, those people are going to be in your corner. Hey, you know what? I know Andre. I've seen his work ethic. I've seen how he is with patients. I've seen how he interacts with his colleagues. You know what? I think he will be, he will be good for leadership. I saw how he took initiative. I saw how he solved this problem. I saw how he diffused the situation or does he escalate the situation? This person, he or she will be a great fit for our leadership position. So definitely find a mentor, education, and take initiative. You had the nail on the head with everything you just said. That is going to be a snippet and a clip in my podcast. That, to me, sums up what leadership is. You are always, in, that would definitely be so true. Life. People are always watching, even those things that are just regular, everyday things. Oh, my goodness. That was excellent. Marketability and radiology. I got my opinion, but I want to know yours. When I have young x-ray techs come over to, to watch nuclear medicine, the first thing I tell them is, Make sure you get your, your x-ray registry and make sure you get a, a secondary registry, whether it's x-ray and CT, x-ray and MR, x-ray and whatever. Get a second, get a second, a second modality under your belt so that you're more marketable. On, on top of that, education, because yes. a lot of technology, unfortunately, in our field, most places are not a four-year bachelor's degree in nuclear medicine or radiology. You as that tech with x-ray, CT, and a bachelor's, number one, you can command kind of top dollar. Number two, it sets you apart from the next person. So definitely get yeah. an education and definitely and a secondary modality. And in matter of fact, into I, time, because some of our techs don't get to that next level of education, when it comes time for leadership, because you had, because most places are asking for a bachelor's when you go into leadership. And it's actually a bachelor's or a master's preferred. So now that you have the education under your belt and you have the you have dual or triple modality, you're definitely easy to step into leadership. Yeah, I agree. And especially when you have no experience, you know, the, the years of experience count, you know, getting that experience under your belt as well. I am wholeheartedly there with you. I always preach need at least minimum two modalities. And depending on what you want to go for, keep going for that education. Some people say, well, I already have a bachelor's. Well, then go for the next one. And if you already got that one, go for some certain. I know like people who are in director's positions, there are certain certifications that you can go get. Maybe another degree wouldn't help because you already have a master's or a PhD or whatever. So maybe add on some certifications, lean certifications, administrative certifications. There are so many different things in a direction you're trying to go in or education certifications that you can get if that's the direction you want to go in. But the thing you you talked about, number one, always interviewing. Someone spoken to you and go for the certifications, make you more marketable. Go for the education that makes you more marketable. Those things just are golden and I think are the top things. You hit the nail on the head with every last one of those, Andre. So I want you to come back, talk more about your program because you're faculty at a nuclear medicine program. Can you tell us a little bit about that program, where you guys are at now? And I know you said the growth is going to explode. I'm at Gurnick Academy of Medical Arts. That academy has several different programs. The newest program is the nuclear medicine program. One of the first programs 
of its kind because the didactic portion is completely online and you go from didactic to clinicals. Most nuclear medicine programs, you're doing didactic and clinicals at the same time. This program, you're breaking it down didactic first in the clinicals. The only other program that I know that is like that is a program that I graduated from is the military's program. The educational director there who created the program, she was a veteran and a graduate of the Naval School of Health Science where this program originated from. It's growing now. It's right now, it's just in California, wherever the next state will be Nevada. Aren't any nuclear medicine programs there in Nevada? will be the first and only there. Next is Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and New York. We are trying to expand the program where everyone who wants access to be a nuclear medicine technologist has that access from the comforts of their home. The program is not a pushover program. It's very intense, it's very challenging. We're ready for you when it comes. Very excited. Well, thank you so much, Andre. This has been a really good conversation. I appreciate your time coming onto the podcast, and I hope it will not be your last time with us. Thank you for certainly inviting me. And that's a wrap for this episode of a couple of Rad Techs podcasts. We hope you enjoyed our discussion of the fascinating world of radiology and learned something new about the role we play in the healthcare industry. If you have any questions or topics that you'd love for us to cover, feel free to reach out and let us know what they are. And you guys, please, if you enjoyed this podcast or any of the other episodes, we want to hear what you thought. Leave us a review. Mama's got to pay her bills. It helps. And until next time, stay tuned for more insightful and informative episodes of A Couple of Rad Techs podcast.